want to, as I'm getting started, I just feel compelled to, to point this out again. Uh, I don't know how many of you saw this in the newspaper, but uh, the, uh, the death rate for the, uh, the uh, average age of death, I guess, or death rate, whatever you want to call it, for the United States of America, has actually, uh, the average age of survival, let me put it that way, has declined for the first time in the, since the Spanish flu struck in, what was that, 1918, I believe? Uh, for the first time since the years covering the Spanish flu, the average age of life expectancy for the United States of America has declined three years in a row. Since 1918, it hasn't happened. And uh, I was reading an article about this in the newspaper yesterday, and they said that the crazy thing is the survivability rate for cancer for every other kind of disease, heart disease, uh, everything else, that those death rates are falling. In other words, people are living longer. If you've got Alzheimer's, you're living longer. If you've got cancer, you're living longer. If you've got heart disease, you're living longer. The thing that's driving it down for the last three years are what they are calling diseases of despair. Diseases of despair. You know, I didn't even know there was such a term as diseases of despair. But what they're listing as diseases of despair are alcoholism, opioid addictions, uh, suicide, specifically those three is what they listed. But any kind of drug abuse, uh, specifically the opioid epidemic that they're seeing right now, alcoholism and suicide. Those are the three big things right now. And that is so prevalent in our nation right this minute that it's actually driving the, the life expectancy down. And it has for the last three years in a row. And here we start in 2018. And I, want, I bring that out for this reason. Again, let me remind you that I said that those are diseases of despair. Now, I want to read you some scriptures out of Isaiah. It has nothing to do with what I'm supposed to be teaching tonight. But I'm going to read you some scriptures out of Isaiah chapter 61. I read these scriptures to you all the time. Because of our vision here for the church being a lighthouse, and y'all know, I've looked back, I think I've been saying this since 2013, that we are called for rescue, recovery, and restoration. I've been saying that over and over and over and over till you probably got it memorized as good as I do and may even be tired of hearing me say it, but that's who we are. Rescue, recovery, and restoration. I build that out of Isaiah chapter 61. And I want to remind you in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1, He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. In verse 2, to comfort all who, are, who mourn. In verse 3, to counsel those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, and the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that He may be glorified. And I want to tell you, there is absolutely no answer for the diseases of despair in the United States of America minus Jesus Christ. There will not be an answer to the opioid epidemic. There will not be an answer to suicide. There will not be an answer to alcoholism. And the things that are driving the life expectancy in this country down until we open the door of doors of the floodgate for the rescue, recovery, and restoration of the Prince of Peace. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so with that said, we're about to do a healing conference. We got that coming up January 27th. And on January 27th, that's a Saturday night starting at 630. As you know, we're specifically targeting the Hispanic community for our Hispanic people that have started coming. But uh, that is not going to be just for the Hispanics. We're going to be doing everything in English. We're just going to have a translator. Okay? We're opening the door for everybody. And I want to tell you something. There are people out there that you're rubbing elbows with every single day that you know that are suffering with a terminal disease called diseases of despair. And there's only going to be one answer for them. They're either going to find Jesus Christ or their disease of despair will destroy them in the end. Let me tell you again the solution for what Jesus Christ does for people who are infected with the terminal disease of despair. He said, I came to heal their brokenhearted. I came to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prisons to those who are bound. Opioid addiction is a prison that binds the mind and the body and the soul. Alcoholism is an addiction that binds body, soul, and spirit. 
Despair is a disease that binds body, soul, and spirit. Anxiety, depression, all of that falls under these diseases of despair. But I want to tell you something. Jesus Christ is the answer. So you do whatever it takes. The Bible says go out and compel them to come in. Go into the highways and byways. You make sure they know that Jesus Christ the righteous is the answer. He is the rescuer, recoverer, and the restorer of their soul. You make sure they know that there is an answer for their despair. I don't know how many of you have just, I know I'm, I'm talking around Melissa here tonight because she just had a first cousin that uh, committed suicide this week. His first cousin, is that right? Second cousin. Third, a cousin. A cousin that just committed suicide. Died at 3 o'clock last night. What happened? Well, I can tell you what happened. I don't have to know that the, the, the particulars. I can tell you what happened. Despair. Hopelessness and despair. Why is the, the, the epidemic of opioid abuse in this country, in this area, in Polk County, Arkansas, what it is? It's despair. But I want to tell you, Jesus Christ is the answer for despair. He is hope. He is peace. He is strength. God, look, he is the prince of peace. He is the prince of peace. And we sit on the answer to the epidemic of despair for this country. We sit on the absolute answer. Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Ghost, to deliver, to set free, to open up the prisons, to take that bondage out of people's lives, to bring them hope, to bring them comfort, to bring them beauty for ashes. How many people do you know that when they look in the mirror every single day, all they see is something worthless looking back? How many people do you know that when they look in the mirror, that the things, the despair of their life look, stares back at them and they can't see hope and they can't see peace and they can't see value. All they see is brokenness. All they see is ashes. But I'm telling you, Jesus Christ rose from the dead for this answer. I came to do this one thing. I came to bring them out to give them beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning, and garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He comes to Drag them down that rabbit hole of hopelessness. But Jesus Christ is the answer. He is the light of the darkness. He is the God of the black darkness. He knows where you're at in that black darkness. He is the light that brings you out of the darkness. So I don't know what it takes to get you excited about this fact. That you know people dying, but you got an answer. You got an answer. And His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Jesus. 